Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Generation Y with me, Monana Khalil, and with me, Monana Rayhan Sabazal, inshallah. We're here for the last half an hour of Generation Y. You know what? We started around 10 past 8, and mashallah, it's half past 9. Time has absolutely flown by, mashallah. We've had quite a few callers, mashallah. Um, very, very important calls from. We've had a good mixture of calls, mashallah. We've had the start of the, 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 the young girl. Then we've had a couple of a, a, a young, youngsters as well, Kurram, mm -hmm. I think, and then we had elders as well. So we've, yeah. had a good, we've had a good mixture. But we would really, what we could really do in this last half an hour is loads of calls. Parents, um, youth, teenagers, give us, your, uh, give us your concerns of today, how we can help. And if somebody's got a problem, somebody's got an issue, don't have to give your identity, you don't have to give your name, your city, your place, nothing at all. It's just you can give us an idea of what's going on in the world today, in the, in the schools today, in colleges and universities. And maybe, inshallah, we can, we can try to help. Now, if you're one of those shy people who don't like to phone, then you can email us on generationy at ikra.tv. Generationy at ikra.tv, inshallah. Ta'ala. We are, and if you want to give us a call in 0208 662 Four double five zero. Me and Molana Ray Hansab will be waiting to take your calls. Remember, the Generation Y program is actually dedicated for the youth. Now, I know there's a lot of people in Leicester watching because I did WhatsApp and I did send messages and I did email as well. Lots of people don't even know that we started doing this program. So I'm sure there's a lot of brothers from Leicester watching or sisters in Leicester watching. If you're watching, at least you can email and say, yeah, on Generation Y. Um, at ikra.tv to say we are watching or oh, the show is really good or oh, the show is absolutely boring and you guys are pathetically brilliant. Whatever you want to say, inshallah, it'd be wonderful. It's always good. Ah, you have asked for gender, didn't it? You've got yes. a call on line. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, your name, please, if it's uh, Hamad. Hamad, and you're from uh, Glasgow. Gla oh, Glasgow. Glasgow. Uh, yeah. ha how old are you, Hamad? I'm um, 22. Okay, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I just want to you know commend you on the idea of the show, and this the kind of area that obviously in Islamic channels it's not really been explored yet. There's a lot of shows for you know the oldest, and there's a lot for the youngest as well, and there's nothing pitched towards the sort of late teens sort of age, and uh, I just want to congratulate you on a good idea, basically. Jazakallah. Thank you and, so uh, much, Ahmad. Yeah, and so my age range. There's like a new, uh, not a new phenomenon, but sort of the shisha mm -hmm. that a lot of youngsters are getting into. And the age that they're getting into is getting younger and younger to the stage that you go into one of these places these days and you see sort of underage 14, 15 year old children kicking about. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to, to, you know, get your views on that. Absolutely. Um, shisha is a big issue, to, um, to be quite frank. See, once upon a time, People used to think that shisha is totally um, kosher. They used to think it's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. But the, f but the fact of the matter is, um, the latest research has proven that shisha is actually more harming than cigarettes, yes. than nicotine. Because now shisha, again, it's, it's down to the fact that teenagers or um, a youngsters are 13 or even a younger. Why are they going in such places? You know, Shisha Places is not a place for teenagers. It's not a place for anyone. And they should not be going. So it's totally, totally wrong. And the fact is that if, if you know anyone going to a Shisha Place, tell them not to go. Tell them not to go, and it's a very, very harming. It's very, very da um, a damaging to the health, especially if you're young, from a very tender age. If you start smoking, if you start um, a go, um, a thinking to yourself that shisha, a shisha is a halal way of a smoking, believe me, it is not. And if you Google shisha, you will find out the latest, latest research on it. It's very, very harming. If these are uh, these are places uh, um, people for some reason think that they can go there and they can pass time you are wasting your time and um, I'm, I'm taking in smoke that's harming your um, organs inside harming yourselves so you know stay away from, from, from it and again it's, it's, it's certainly not permissible or a halal way of smoking <laughs> you know me I am anti one number one anti shisha 
right? And there's, there's a few reasons. A, there was a, rec there was a program on the radio uh, recently, and it mentioned the harms of shisha, and they actually went to some of these undercover shisha cafes, and they found out how people, uh, because it's a big hit amongst the youth, it's massive. Mm. It's a mm. big, massive issue. So there's two issues here. A, how, what, how is shisha? Is it good for you or not? Answer to that is black and white, it's, it's really harmful for you, point number one. And it's like smoking, okay, but it's worse than smoking though, right? Um, and, and the other thing is that um, when you have shisha, you, you, there's a lot of places now, I'm talking about my city, Leicester, where the boys and girls mingle together, they're smoking shisha together, one pipe here, one pipe there. So then they're socialising and then it's all that boys and girls mix in having shisha together. So where is that permissible? I say if someone is dying for shisha and you really can't, then have it in your own house if you really want to. You know the harms, they're bad enough, but if you're desperate, it's like smoking, fine, fair enough, have it. But there's no need to go to the shisha cafes. Because personally, I think it's, it's really, really bad. The mahol is bad, the environment is bad, and your health is bad. And there's nothing good about it at all, in my opinion. Let's take a call, Bola, on that. Okay. Got another caller? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, your name, please? Um, my name is Mohammed, brother. And you are from? Uh, London. London. Gee, brother Mohammed, how can we help? Yeah, I, I just um, turned over, mashallah, and uh, um, first and foremost, I'd like to commend you, like the last brother. Um, you know, uh, he's totally right in terms of the Islamic uh, scene. There's, there's no way around that actually talk about the issues today, you know, especially yeah. with the youth. And, um, you know, in our deen, I think uh, these are, it's very important to to first, number one, to be aware of the current issues, and um, only then you can tackle them. Oh. But, um, you know, I, I, I do feel like, you know, like imams or like generally people, they hesitate to, to talk about these issues, but if, if you just stray away from them, then, you know, these, these problems will just like, you know, they will just snowball and snowball. Yeah. And these are our youth we're talking about, and these are the future. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's a very important matter. Uh, with respect to the shisha cafes, uh, you know, I'm quite strong about that myself. Um, like, uh, there are, where I live, there are a couple that are around. But alhamdulillah, I think one just closed down last week. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not too sure what happened, but um, authorities came in there. And it just goes to show that, you know, I mean, the environment side is, is totally wrong, you know. And um, there could be no benefit in it at all. Mm. So, um, you know, when people say that, you know, it's makru, it's this and that, I mean, common sense wise, there's no benefit, no good in it. And if people realize this, then they'll notice their way. And furthermore, like the environment, like the Imam was saying, is, is totally bad. And, you know, from one haram to another, things lead on. And if this is what the youth call like time passing, then this is very bad. Like the Imam said, uh, one of the seven under the shade of the Allah, is those youth who spend their time wisely worshipping of Allah and every minute in our life is very very important you know like mm. you have a learning or you're teaching and if we don't do it at a young age then who's to say we'll be around to do it in the future life is very short and the youth need to really wake up I'm not I'm not too old myself but alhamdulillah you know like you how know, old are you if you don't mind me asking how old are you <laughs> I'm 26 alhamdulillah. oh Marshall you're very young yeah you're very young. You're very young. Yeah, You're very young. Two years older than me. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I still would like to say I'm young, but I'm, yeah. I'm married as well. And I I'll like um, talk about that as well. I only got married in December last year. Congratulations. But, um, but I'd really recommend this to, to everyone, to all the youth out there. And there's no excuse. And all the barriers that parents put up and, but, you know, the, the social climate that they put up, it's all nonsense. If, you know, if you do it sincerely for the sake of Allah, you know, there's so much reward in it and so much benefit in it. And, you know, it, it really, it really <clears throat> structured your life and it only helps you doing good. Mm. Um, so even that's helped me. But as I look around, I see people my age and, and I do feel like they're sleeping. They, they haven't woken up. And a lot of the excuses out there is, um, you know, one day, inshallah, when I'm older. When I'm older, that's the cliche, yeah. isn't it? When yeah. I'm older, you know, like, alhamdulillah, now I've grown a beard as well. But I see brothers that, you know, question me. Okay, um, uh, do call us, call us back. Um, do do that's call us back, inshallah. Yeah, sh yeah. Shall we take another one, Mawlana? We've got another caller here. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Yeah, who's calling? Is it okay if I could stay confidential? Sure. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, basically, I was wondering if a Muslim girl could leave home at the age of 16. 
um, leave home? Yeah, like Should... away from her parents to a different city. For what? Pardon? For what reason? Like for another guy, but their family don't accept him. Okay, so she wants to get married to some guy. So no, not like, like, we just want to get to know each other, like not get married as of yet. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so, so basically the girl is 16 years of age. Mm-hmm. Well, 15 she, at the minute. Okay, 15 at the minute, and she wants to move away from her parents' house. Yeah. And she wants to go to um, live or spend time with this, with this chap, yeah? Yeah. Okay, now, now um, that is, um, and the purpose of that is because maybe in the future they want to get married. Yeah. Okay, now the best way forward for, for that is that you and um, the teenagers do not take it in your hands, okay? Mm -hmm. Do not take this issue in your hand. If you fancy someone, if you like someone, if you're attracted to someone, if, you, if someone uh, you find appealing, that's cool, that's absolutely fine. But let's go through the right channels. And the right channels, what are the right channels? This is where you involve your parents. Mm -hmm. Okay, involve your parents, involve your local imam and say, hey, you know what, I fancy this guy or this guy fancies me and I can see myself with this guy until I live. Hatta al maut, inshallah. What is the best way to sort this out? What's the process? Let the parents come involved. Let, them, let the parents talk and inshallah, when it's the right age, see shura and mashura and consulting one another, that's where the barakah lies. And the Quran tells us this all the time. Whatever you do, you do through um, a mutual uh, um, consulting, okay? Mm -hmm. But you must not, one must not take the matter in his or her hands and go out of the way because this is where the shaitan plays the game. You was with you, fee sudur in nas. Here the shaitan will be whispering in your mind and your hearts. Look, go, you can make this happen. You're 15, you know, you're, you know, you're not young anymore. You can speak for yourself. No, the parents always, always, you know me, even until this day, right, if mm -hmm. I want to do something, I ask my mom and dad. The first person I go to, the first people I go to is my parents, and then I call my um, ustads um, from Dewsbury. That uh, is the way forward, so you don't take the matter in your hands at all. May, may I just add, add, add a bit to that? What Molana said was very, very important. But the thing is, many people think but by going to, uh, if you want to know a guy, or if a guy wants to know a girl, uh, is best before they get married is to actually go out with them, stay with them for some time, go out with them, go to eat, drink, etc. Et and then yeah. you get to know a person. The truth of the matter is, you still don't know a person. This is the absolute truth of it. You will never get to know if this person is the right or wrong person for you. So on top of what Molana said, Molana says mashura, which is very important in deen, but add with that istikhara. Yes. Right? Istikhara salah. Read Salah and you're asking Allah. Now example, if you ask me sister for Molana, what do you think about this guy? I'm going to say, you know what, from what I know, he's a good guy, he's good, he's like this, he's like that. Right? Now, that's from my knowledge. Right? And my knowledge is, is very limited. But istikhara is you're asking Allah his opinion. And Allah will give you the best guidance. And, and uh, while you're on the phone, this is a really, really, Molana, this is an amazing point. I had a call from a sister once. Um, she said, you want, this is just mind-boggling, well, this is absolutely mind-boggling. She fell in love with this guy, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy um, wasn't so interested in her, but she really loved the guy. And then, so she became desperate. She really wanted to marry this guy. And this girl, young girl, unfortunately, lost her parents. She was a yatim girl, Muslim girl. So she was so distressed, but she was so much in love with this guy. That, you know, one day through the letterbox, you get these little cards say, if you have any problems, visitors will help you. You know, we can see into the future, blah, 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 blah. So she got this one of these cards, right? You won't believe this is just amazing. So she was so distressed and she was so much in love that she went to this guy. So initially, Monana, they charged her 30 pounds counseling, right? That this is what we charge. Now, I'm going to ask you, right, sister, you can answer this as well if you can. Yeah. She, how much do you think she paid this guy to resolve her matter? Well, no, no, I'm asking you this question first. You take a guess. I'm not too sure. 50 pounds? Your guess is 50 pounds, yes? Yeah. Well, no, no, you take your guess. Okay, 30 pounds was the initial fee. Initial fee. And how long did she go, go for? Um, let's just say a year. She went for a year. So maybe in the thousands? How many? 
uh, if it's uh, 30 pounds the initial fee, I'm going to kind of assume if she went for the whole year, maybe a few thousands. Few four, five, three, four thousand pounds maybe. Sister, you want to take another guess? Pardon? Do you want to take another guess? How much yeah, she spent? Yeah, I think I'll go for a few thousand. Okay, she spent eleven thousand pounds. Wow. Eleven thousand pounds. She, and then I asked her, Did, "Was your issue resolved?" It no, wasn't. No, no. It wasn't resolved. So that's why, sister, if you or anybody you know is interested in a guy, or if there's a guy who's interested in a girl, mashwira with your parents and istikara. Salah, ask Allah for guidance. Inshallah, you won't have to spend a penny. Your decision which you'll make will be correct and you'll be happy for the rest of your life. Inshallah. And another thing, another note now, while you're on the line, love is blind. Yes. You know, once upon a time, I used to believe in love marriages. Once upon a time. Qabl ayyamin kathiratin kathiratin jidda. Jahiliya. But now, arranged marriage is the best solution. Now, let me tell you something. i tell you why love is blind. You know, there's a saying, sun rises in the east, yeah. sets in the mm -hmm. west. Love rises in the heart, sets after death. Love is a thing that affects the... Affects the love is a thing that touches the heart and affects the brain. So, love will only affect you. It won't go any further. But if you do, like Maulana said, istikhara and mashura with your parents, the right channels, that's what we mean. And another thing I said earlier on, discipline. Allah explains discipline so, so well. Discipline equals, how do we get the word discipline? You organize your life. You organize it by prioritizing your life. How do you prioritize and you organize, you manage? Now, all three words, organization, prioritization, and also management equals discipline. If you go through that channel, you will never ever go wrong and you will live happily ever after. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Well, whoever this person is, make sure you pass this on and um, you know, do things the right way. Don't spoil it for yourselves. I know so, so many people, brothers and sisters, who have done things the right way out of Josh. You know what Josh me ajate hai? Then they pid wo hosh ko ko dete. So you don't want that happening. You don't want to um, get overexcited um, just for a couple of months and a few months and down the line, that's it. You're gone. Yeah. Don't do that. Hope, we, hope we've been handy and helpful, inshallah, and you make lots of dua for us, sister, inshallah, okay? Yeah. Well, I had another question as well. Go on then, Go on. fire away. Well, I was wondering, what does, like, what's your opinions on social networking sites? What's what? Our opinions on social networking. Well, again, I mean, I, I think we touched on that as well. See, yeah. anything you do, whether it's television, whether it's social networking, it's how you use it. It's like saying, you know, if you jump in, if you jump in a car or, 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 or if you're riding a bike, if you, if you drive that car slowly according to the law, you will not be harmed. But if you go jungly with that car, if you avoid all the road restrictions, then you will be um, um, creating damage for yourselves and for others. Similarly, similarly, what's up? Let me give you an incident. Maybe a lot of people may know this. Facebook, let me tell you what Facebook does. Two people chatting on Facebook. They're chatting for a while. Two people, a male and a female. And they, um, they get to know one another. They have their own Facebook names. Obviously not their real names. And they go by, um, let's say, Tom and Harry. They're not using their real names on Facebook. They chat to one, one another. A boy, a teenager, a boy, a teenager girl. And they start getting in love. And then they do this for three months and for four months. And they start, you know, they're, um, they're exchanging um, love uh, um, notes and messages, etc., etc. One day after three, four months, they decide to meet. So where do they meet? They say, okay, we'll meet here. So the girl is waiting there and the boy goes and, you know, his heart's beating, the girl's heart beating, they open the door and it happens to be a sister. So that's Facebook. That is social networking. Yeah. This is something that we should not abuse. Use it in the right way. Anything we do in the right way, inshallah. Let's move on to the next call. Molana. Jazakallah khair, sister. We appreciate your call. We've got another call online. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Um, uh, Mulana, uh, I wanted to ask you a question. Ji. Uh, I'm from Leicester, by the way. I'm uh, 21 years old. Okay. Basically, um, I got into the wrong crowd and I started doing drugs and started doing all sorts. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I got into the bad company. My dad didn't like it because obviously it's wrong what I was doing, taking drugs and oh. doing all sorts of wrong things. So basically, um, uh, I tried stopping it. I tried playing my namazes, uh-huh. tried all sorts of stuff. But every time I tried something different, something would go wrong, and it would I would go back to my old uh, my old things yeah. like smoking and stuff. So uh-huh. I, I need some help. Like, what could you advise me? Because I've tried everything, it's not working. Okay, first of all, as you being from Leicester, inshallah, what I would advise you to come, do is come and meet me. That's the first thing we can do, inshallah. Ta'ala. Then I've got friends who, who are specialists in, the, in, in this field where people, if somebody's taking drugs, they can, inshallah, help you. And hopefully it's like a, a, a rehab sort of thing. And hopefully they can over time. Because when you get into a habit of either drugs or alcohol, whatever it may be, it doesn't go away straight away. It's like a person smoking. Sometimes you can leave it for a month or two months and then you get... Sometimes you could be sitting with friends and you see them smoking and you think, oh, you know what, you have the urge for smoking and it comes back again. The same thing for drugs, same thing for alcohol. So what you do, inshallah, um, as I'm being from Leicester, you, you know where Masjid al is, don't you? G, G, G. And, and you know me very well when you see me. I've not given my real name. Okay, to you, to fine. That's, that's fine. That's no, no, we, we, I want you to ask for it, uh, Muhammad. So I tell you what, you come and meet me, I'll get you in the, uh, contact with the right people inshallah ta'ala. And for all those other people who are watching this program, we will have a special program just on drugs. And I will get a special panel of people who can give you the best advice that way if you are involved in drugs, how to refrain and stop drugs. So the general people, don't worry, we will get a panel. But Muhammad, do meet me in Leicester and then we can take you from there inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. And I, and I think on that note, Molana, for anyone of that age, 20, 21 years of age, mm-hmm. I think it's important for you to suss out what you want to do in life. Yeah. You know, think to yourself, anyone in that situation, even me, I'm going to talk about myself, even me, you know, I'm no perfect human being. Mm. You know, I do a lot of things that maybe I'm not supposed to be doing. But what we, <laughs> what we need to do is sit down and think. Sit down and think. Yar, where is my life go- going? What do I want to become? What do I want to do? I've jumped in the wrong group. Now, friends, true friends. You know, my mother always used to say, your friend is your back pocket. That's it. Your fr- Until this day, my mother would say this, your friend, your best friend is your back po- po- um, pocket. No one else. If a friend says to you, Yar, I've got, I've got a spliff rolled up. Come with me. We'll have a joint together. We'll enjoy it. We'll go in the park. We'll, go, you know, we'll visit Cloud Nine. We'll do this. We'll do that. Automatically, you should say to yourself, you know what? I'm not going there. I'm not going to go there. If another person comes at the same time and says to you, Yad, let's go for Dhor Salah at the mosque. Let's go for Maghrib Salah at the mosque. Now, Allah's given you the aql. Allah's given you the God-given reasons are there. Do you go towards the, um, towards the join a spliff or do you go to the mosque and pray your Salat al-Maghrib? Most important thing is keep your mind and your heart engaged. Keep engaged. Have a rota. Have a system. Have a timetable. Subhas afternoon. Afternoon sasham. What will you be doing? I'm at college from this time to this time. What am I going to do in college? I say the most successful students are those who go to college, they sit in class, they pay attention to the lecture, they make the notes, they register everything, digest all the information and they come back home and they do and they go over it again. I'm telling you the system of Darul Uloom. Darul Uloom in Madrasa, that's what our teachers taught us. That's what we did. Went to class, listened very carefully end the evening, came back home, went over the work, keep yourself busy and your as students, as teens, Maulana, it should be home, school, masjid. Home, school, masjid. That's it. That's your pyramid. You don't go, you don't go out of that. You stay yep. within that. True. Exactly. I've got an email here. Finally, yes. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa Khalil, brilliant to hear you again. Jazakallah for the insight about youth. I think this subject needs to be issued constantly as today's generation of youth are becoming more open to sins without any sort of barrier control. I see this on daily basis where Muslim girls and boys are uh, interacting, flirting openly in shisha cafes, gyms and other places and heading out to hotels, etc. This needs to be stopped and parents need to see what their kids are up to and keeping them in check. Sister from Leicester. Absolutely, she summed up quite spot a few on. things. Yeah, spot s- on. Absolutely spot on. 
Oh, well, we've, well um, this last 20, half an hour has gone really, really quick. We've only got five well, minutes Well, I did say left. to you, Molan, at the start, it's going to fly by. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it has flown by. And I, 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 I would just say, say a big jazakallah to you for giving me company, because I, would have, I don't think I would have ever done it on my own. Um, so you Molana, you know what? One thing I say all the time, I'm at Iqra TV, everyone knows, full time. Yeah. I am working on different, different shows for the community. Yeah. You know, I don't have time to do any other shows. Mm. Iqra with Iqra is bang on. <laughs> you know, it's five days a week, four hours live shows, 20 mm. hours, you know, teaching people Quran and Islamic studies. You know, Generation Y is a show. And the fact that I'm glad that Mawlana Qasim invited you. I yeah. remember the last R Ramadan, he made you say on when we were hosting the show, <laughs> okay. you are going to come on Iqra TV. Yeah, and I'm glad he made that move. Yeah. Because now Generation Y, Alhamdulillah, the, um, the team here, Iqra team, we work together, you know, Generation Y, and the fact that I, you know, we've all got ideas, and we need to bounce our ideas because we want this show to go very, very far. Just like any other show, inshallah, that's going to be coming out next year, along with Just Law and other shows that we have, we want people to really take something from Generation Y. If there's a problem, it's more like Khalil that we are going to contact. Yeah. Who are you going to call? The Generation Y team, inshallah. But on a serious note, folks, Jazakallah khair for your phone calls. We've had that we had a lovely, I think that sister touched on it. We had the Muhammad, we had um, the email as well. Fantastic. And from the youth, this, the, the, and that, uh, the, the other brother who got married as well, mashallah, is going to be his anniversary this December. Yes. So, mashallah, good luck to you. But brilliant. It's been a fantastic response, it has, excellent it has. response. And I, I hope um, uh, you all listen, uh, enjoyed the program. It's only a second show of Generation Y. Things will improve, things will get better. When are we on next? Not exactly 100% sure, but we're hoping to come here on the 24th of December, inshallah. Christmas Eve, inshallah. And hopefully on that program, we're going to issue, talk about office parties. Yep, office parties. Yeah. There'll be loads of office parties going yeah. on. And we're going to talk about Isa alayhi salatu was salam as well. The true understanding of um, Isa alayhi salatu was salam. The life of Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Christmas. Is it? What does Islam say about it? Listen, we're not here to knock any other religion. We're not here to criticize any other religion. But we need to understand from Islam, our Islamic point of view, how we go about Christmas. Um, we, live in, in, we, li we do live in this country. So obviously... <coughs> That doesn't mean, sometimes we, people say that well, because we live in the UK, we go to, you know, uh, yes, I say we respect other people's religion. That's very, very important. Respecting other people's religion is very, very important. But more is important is to f respect others and follow our religion. That's very, very important, inshallah. So hopefully, Allah willing, um, the, the Generation Y ad should be up, inshallah, and we'll let you know when the next program is. But we're hoping that, inshallah, on the 24th of December, inshallah, we shall be back. And I'm going to see if Mulan Rayhan's free on that day. I know he does a lot of work and he's probably shattered. And he's, he's not that, he's, he's starving as well. Yes. You know, oh, ju during the break, his stomach's been rumbling, making all sorts of funny, funny noises. <laughs> but Allah Ta'ala giving Jazak is, 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 is an absolute star. And may Allah, Allah. Ta'ala keep him a star for always, inshallah. Ta'ala. And brothers and sisters, do make the work for Generation Y for this program to be a huge success. It's not about name and fame that Mulan Khalil Mulan Rayhan. It's about through this program, even if we manage to save one person's iman, one, because I did mention last week as well, uh, on the last show, sorry, that there are many youngsters who are even doubting the whereabouts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're even thinking, is there such a thing called Allah? Is there God? Is there Allah? And if through this program we can save one person's iman, then I think it's mission accomplished. Well, I mean, the, um, the thing is, we are here to touch people's hearts. I think any program, any show we do, it's about touching people's hearts. Yeah. It's about making people comfortable. It's about a generation why what the teens need to realize and accept and understand and digest is that we, Generation Y is very, we are approachable. Yeah. You are approachable. Yeah. Mawlana Khalil Patel from Leicester is approachable. And people need to understand that and realize that whatever issue you have, guys, this is the show that you need to call. And inshallah soon, um, Generation Y, you know, you, you will know exactly when it's gonna happen. It's gonna be fixed uh, because Mawlana's traveling all the way from Leicester to London. You can imagine it's a mission in itself. He's gonna give us two, um, two days, um, inshallah, twice, um, twice a month inshallah and you will know those days more on over to you jazakallah khair we've only got a few seconds to go i've really loved today's show mashallah um it's been fantastic now to make the show possible to make it successful it it requires on two things um obviously us 
and obviously the, the, the viewers and, the, and they're phoning and, the, and you've made it possible, people emailing, Mawlana Ray Hansab, Mawlana Qasim, the whole Iqra team, everybody behind the scenes, Allah Ta'ala give you jazakh khair. And make dua for us, inshallah, we can make this a huge, huge success. We're going to start the sunnahs of Rasulullah from January. We're going to start talking about the life of Rasulullah from January so that our example, our role model, role model the coolest, the best, the most wonderful, the most amazing person in our life becomes Rasulullah Wasallam. Not any footballer, not any actor, not any person at all, but only Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam take care have a wonderful time remember us in your duas inshallah see you soon 24th of december assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh